I'm frequently asked how to obtain an isovolumic relaxation time. I'm going to show you in this video, but it's important to note that IVRT is not a useful standalone measure. A patient with diastolic dysfunction can have a prolonged IVRT, a shortened IVRT, or even a normal one. So unless you're combining this with a number of different parameters for diastolic function assessment, it's really not worth doing. From my apical four chamber view, I'm going to lift the tail of my probe slightly to give myself a bit of a five chamber. And what I want to do is catch the inflow and the outflow. So first thing I'm going to do is just increase my sample volume a little bit. I don't want a really tiny specific sample volume as we do usually with other types of traces. Then I'm going to use my colour Doppler to guide me. And I think that probably around here, I'm going to catch the inflow and some of that blue outflow there as well. I'm going to just bring my baseline up a little bit so that I can see both directions. And very importantly, I'm going to change my sweep speed so that I have much greater chance of actually seeing what's going on. So I'm getting a nice outflow, not getting a good inflow. So I'm going to need to reposition that, try a different spot. And with Doppler here, it's particularly difficult because we have aortic regurgitation to try and dodge as well. On this dog, because she has significant aortic regurgitation, it's difficult to find a spot that misses that jet that still gets our left ventricular outflow. So it's a little bit of a messy trace compared to what I'd be able to get in an animal that didn't have aortic regurgitation. But hopefully you can see, here is her aortic outflow. You only really care about catching the part close to the baseline. You just want to see where it joins to the baseline. It doesn't matter if you miss off the peak. And then you want to see the beginning of her E wave, of her early filling wave. To actually calculate my IVRT, my machine has an IVRT option. If yours doesn't, you can simply use a time measurement option instead. And I'm going to measure to where my aortic outflow is joining the baseline to where my E wave begins and I'm getting an IVRT of 31 milliseconds. And this represents the time delay between systolic ejection ending and early mitral inflow beginning. I hope you can see past Doppler's rather difficult trace. She does feel a little bit left out if we bring other dogs in as examples and today is her third birthday so I thought it was only fair to make sure she was in this video. Hopefully it's still giving you a good idea of where to place your sample gate, how to adjust it so make it a little bit larger, it'll make your life easier and make sure you change that sweep speed so that you're getting just one or two sets of waveforms on your screen at a time. That's going to make visualisation and measurement so much easier. Bring your baseline a little bit up, so just below the middle of your screen and don't worry about catching the bottom for your aortic outflow or the tops of your mitral inflow. This isn't important from this view and indeed you shouldn't make any other measurement from this trace. You should only be using this for your IVRT.